Hi everyone, this is Motion Designing Blender and I will share you my ideas, tools, tips and tricks. I am Maysam Hosseini from GQB. As usual, sorry me about my bad English. My native language is Persian, but I try my best to explain everything clearly. For this project, I have needed base texture that I have designed it in another amazing open source software, Inkspace. Please, please do not colorize your textures in projects like this. Later, you will have the option to colorize it in Blender. For my rolling texture, I have designed it by two parts, top and bottom, that have same size horizontally. Okay, let's get started. First, I want to clear my scene by deleting everything. A to select X to delete, and Shift A to add a plane to my scene. Okay, and now I need some room for my timeline panel and I change it to shader editor and add new material to my plane. Next shift A to add the image texture. I'm clicking open to find my texture and I'm selecting my texture to add to my material. Control shift and click to directly preview in material output of my plane. I'm changing my viewport to viewport shading and I can see my texture but I have an issue my texture is stretched I need to map this texture to correct dimension Control T to add two nodes texture coordinate and mapping if you can do like this you need to enable node wrangler for many shortcuts and action in your node graphs. Go to Edit Preferences. In Add-ons, you can search Node and you will find Node Wrangler. And then active this native add-on. Then save Preferences and close Windows. Now I need to scale my texture parameters by mapping node to figure it its right dimension. My texture have 1920 pixels for width and 473 pixels for height. Now I figure this dimension by mapping node 0.473 for X and 1.920 for Y. Okay. Now I need to add a math node vector mass node to scale my texture shift a math vector mass and i set it to scale and now if i scale value of the scale up or down it is correctly scaled and i set it to six i think it is good next i need to rolling my texture by changing x value of location but I need to rolling each node separately with different speed. If I control shift click on texture coordinate nodes, you can see different UV mapping of this object. But I need UV parameters now. I duplicate this node shift D to add to my UV parameters to have correct dimension of my texture. And then scale it by six uh, shift A search mass vector mass and set it to del and i set it to six now i need to add another math node vector mass node and i set it to fractions to repeat my texture as you see my uv repeated horizontally and vertical but i need to repeat it just across the y-axis yes i another node separate XYZ control shift and click and this node shows you reputation of my UV across X Y and Z axis okay I set it to Y and add another node again but uh, this time math not vector math it is simple math node 
and I set it to greater than or less than. In this case, it is the same. Remember that my texture have two rows, if I show you. And now I have separated black and white mask for each rows of my scaled texture. Okay, now we have our mask. Let me make some room. I need to duplicate this node setup, Shift D, okay. And I add UV coordinate to vector of second math node and now i have two different textures with two different mapping nodes now i need new node to mix these two textures shift a mix color okay and i'm connecting uh, color result of texture one to a second texture two to b second and i'm connecting result to material output now if i change this x location value um, of my first texture you can see texture 1 rolling across texture B. But I need to control this factor by my mask. I connect my mask result to factor. Now, mixing of these two textures controlled by this black and white mask. And now, if I change X parameters of location of texture 1, it is rolling independent and same for texture 2. Good. Next, I need to make some control for these parameters. I click and drag out this socket and search combine X, Y, Z. Okay, now I can change all location parameters by separated socket. And now I can add another node value and connect value to X socket, same for this mapping node, shift D, vector to location, and value to X factor. Here we can rolling those textures by this value, but those textures rolling the same. But I want lower rows rolling faster than upper rows. Shift A, add math, and set it to multiply, and multiply it by two. Now, if I change my value, I have different speed for each rows. Good. And then I can control it by frames when I play my animation. I insert hash frame divide by 400. I think it is good. Okay. I have figured up my rolling texture, but I need some changes for color and look of my textures. Shift A, search invert, invert color, and drag it to here to invert black to white of these rows, as you see. And now, as I mentioned you about uh, colorizing your texture, I can colorize my texture now. Shift A, and another node, search mix color, okay and add this result to factor. This mask is set the value of mixing of these two colors. I can change it to dark blue and change this color to light blue. I think it is not bad or greenish blue. Okay, it is not bad and it is works. And now it is time to add my deformer to display. Let me change this panel to timeline again. Okay, and resize it. Now I need to add some division to my plane. Pressing tab to edit mode, right click, subdivide, and set number of cuts to about 30. Pressing tab to return to object mode. Next, I need to add lattice, shift A, lattice. I go to top view by pressing seven on numpad and press S to scale this lattice a little bit bigger than my plane. Okay, and S, Z to scale it across Z axis. Okay, I go to here, object data properties of this lattice and set resolution U to six and V the same, I set it to six. Let me hide the plane and add some controllers to this lattice. I go to top 
view by pressing 7 on my numpad. Tap to edit mode and I select these four vertices of the lattice. It is better to toggle X-ray to don't losing the vertex located in bottom part. Okay, again, select this four and control H to hook to new object. I press tab to return to object mode. And as you see, if I move this controller, it is moved by self that lattice vertices. Let me set size of this controller. Again, I go to the top and select lattice and now select these rows and columns vertices. Okay, and control H to hook to new object again. Control tab to return to object mode again and I change this control display as Q and I set scale a little smaller. If I move this controller, as you see that vertices that hook to moves by this controller. And again back into top and tap to edit mode. Select these rows and columns and control H to new hook object. Tap to return and I select this and change display mode as, I don't know, a sphere and set scale it a little bigger. And now same as another controller, when I move this controller, it moves the vertex of this lattice. Now I am unhiding the plane and adding next modifier to, from the former category, adding lattice. And in the object selection, I choose lattice. Here we go. If I move every of my controller, lattice deforms this plane as good as you see. Now I can hide this lattice from viewport and I select from this menu mesh non-selectable to select every controller easy and fast. Now I need setting up camera for my scene. Shift A, camera pressing Alt R and Alt G to reset rotation and location of the camera. And I move camera a little bit up to frame my plane from camera view. I press N to open N panel and I set Z position of the camera a little bit higher. Now I go to output panel and I set resolution X and Y same by 1500 to make square frame for this typography. Now I need to add another 3D viewport to my workspace and I press N and T to hide the menu for this viewport. I will use right viewport to modify my controllers. It is time to deform my typography. If I rotate scale and move each of my controller it's affected my typography as you see let me deform it as i think it will be cool okay and now i can press space to play my typography animation i think it's cool i'm very happy with this let me rotate this one a little bit and you can see what happens to my typography now I can keyframe my deformers and make animated deforms. In frame 25, I press I to add location, rotation, scale keyframe for each controller. I am using Blender 4.0, but in the newer version of Blender, you need to press K instead of I to set your keyframe. Next, I go to frame 15 and I reset this deformer by pressing Alt R, Alt G and press G to move it down a bit, pressing I to insert keyframe for location, rotation, and scale. Now I select this controller, I press R and Z to rotate it across Z axis and scale it a little bit up. And again, I to insert key for this deformer. As you see, my deformers now animated. I think it is good enough. Now for changing keyframe acceleration of this controller, I can select those and I go to timeline panel and change it to graph editor. A little bit room for graph editor, normalize it. And now I set 
pivot point to individual centers. Then I scale it like this and you can play and see what happened. Wow, <laughs> it is cool. Okay, let me scale it a little bit down and it is good. Next, I set end animation to 75 and I played and watch looped animation. This is beautiful typography, I think. Now it's time to lighting my scene. First, I go to left viewport that's set to camera view and set viewport shading to render preview. And I go to scene setup and set render engine to cycles or EV or even X as you wish. And I set device to GPU computing, active denoising and set maximum sample to 32. I think it is enough. Now I add uh, area light to my scene and I locate it as I desire. I set my word strength to zero and modify the location of the light. Now for setting direction of the light, when the light selected, you can press shift T and direction of this light is a stick to your mouse location and you can set wherever you want but we have an issue light not affected my plane as you see it is because of uh, my shader i go to set timeline to shader graph and select the plane it is because of my setup i have set material output by this mix node and I have bypass my principal VSF node. I drag it in between of this connection and now I have shaded material. I set the roughness to one and now I play with my light to figure lighting of my scene as I wish by adding another light and setting the light directions. Now I can change power of the lights by selecting the light and right click select adjust the light and moving my mouse left and right. I do it for another light and a little bit change to my modifier to find my desired shadow and highlight of my scene. You can animate anything by this typography. For example, you can set key for your colors or changing the former as you wish. At the end, you can go to output panel and set your output path wherever you want to save your render and set file format as you wish and any other setup you want and render it and enjoy it don't forget to subscribe my channel for other videos that i will make for this series and like this video if it was useful and enjoyable